I really need to do something about that scrap wood. Hey, aren't those the cutoffs from the beam lanterns? I should just throw those away. <coughs> or I could just upcycle you further. The idea is to take another chunk out of the corners we already cut. If you only have a single size of lantern made, this is not that tricky, but since I have made three, each with different dimensions, you can adjust use your fence. Well, you could reset it for every piece, but you could also use an auxiliary fence, aka a flat straight piece of scrap. This will allow you to leave the fence set and cut off chunks of equal thickness for all lantern sizes. For reference, that thickness should be between 1 and 2 curve width. Just make sure that the piece you use is not too thick like this one. The lantern scrap needs to rest on the table, not on the auxiliary scrap. The process to find the right height for the plate is virtually the same as the one I used for the beam lanterns. To recap, run the piece through the saw with a low setting, then run the other side of the same corner, i.e. flip the piece. Now you can see how far you still need to raise the plate, until both cuts intersect. For a clean cut, they should intersect completely, without leaving a ridge on the piece. Once you have your plate set, cut out four L shapes from the four corners of the scrap. But as you can see, you are asking for kickback with this setup. The small piece can, and probably will, get propelled back towards you. The difference though, is that they are pretty light, and do not pack any punch worth mentioning. And, more importantly, when you are expecting it, you can brace yourself. Be careful when switching pieces. A different corner dimension might result in the blade being set too high. This is why this piece became a test piece for later on. Also, make sure to cut every corner just once. I did not and cut this one twice. Good thing these pieces started out as scrap. Once all corners are done, you need to cut a shallow dado into the remaining pieces on all four prongs and on both sides. In retrospect, do a try run to make sure that you set them far enough from the outside that the corners can later perform their magic. For drama reasons, you will have to wait a moment longer to see what that magic actually is. This dado needs to be as wide as the thickness of your L shapes. To achieve this, set the fence to the desired depth, run all 8 sides through and then set the fence slightly further from the blade. Cut one side and test the fit. Work your way up to it, then repeat the second cut on the remaining 7 dados. Did I say 7? I accidentally forgot about the other side and only cut 4 dados. So then I had to reset my fence to the first setting, which caused a slight difference in snugness from one side to the other. Before you can finish the design, you need to cut the scrap piece in half. Because mine was getting tricky to balance on one face, I used my sled and ran it through standing like an X. I used a stop block to align the cuts from all four sides and finished up with a handsaw. This also added a small design element on top that was completely intentional. Now the magic comes in. The corner shapes get flipped around to slide into the two dados on each corner. In my case the dados were almost too close to the outside, so this is where you need to check before you cut. I still managed to find four pieces to complete the holder. It makes for a nice geometry and you could now take a saw, scroll saw or band saw to add some design elements to the L's or just add a curve for them to increase the light that the holders let us. It does not have a T-light indentation but you can still use it as you can see. So, tea light holder from the scraps of another tea light holder. But since my wife said we already have enough tea light holders, this was all just an elaborate ruse to finally. Honey, I made another tea light holder!
Thanks for watching and remember to be inspired.